What is going on everybody? It is Bush Fishing and we are back in my own shop. Today we're going to be stripping down the power head of this Johnson 70 horse. This is a 1988 version. In the last video, if you didn't follow along, we got the power head stripped out. Today we're going to be taking it apart, seeing the damage. What's wrong with this is the top piston is melted. So you'll see that in a second, but in today's video we're going to get everything stripped off of it. We're going to get the pistons out and we're going to see what we need to order. And then from there, the next video is going to be reassembling and putting in the motor. We're going to have break-in videos, all that fun stuff. But if you guys are new here, I'm Bush Fishing. I make primarily fishing videos, but lately we've been doing a lot of outboard repair videos. And there's going to be a lot more of it. It's spring coming soon, so we're going to have fishing. So if that's anything that you guys are interested in, and make sure to subscribe down below but before we start the idea for this video is going to be step by step in the order you should do it we're going to kind of start from the top and then the front back in so i cheated a little bit the other day i brought this home and i was going to record this i didn't have an electric impact i don't have a compressor back here but just making sure i got the flywheel loose this is a flywheel puller you can buy them cheap on Amazon, but on the top of these Evinrude flywheels, there's three bolt holes. These are half-inch bolts. I can't remember the thread pitch for the life of me. But they thread in, and the center one pushes against the top, and then I got the top nut off. So let's get into the video. But before we do, Bush Fish and Merch, I'm not in it again. But first link down in the description, check it out. Helps me out a lot. We got some sick designs. So let's get into the video. First things first, I'm going to get the flywheel off, then we're going to get the carbs off and go from there, take the starter off and kind of work our way back since the head's already off. So I'm going to get this flywheel off and we'll get into it. All right, so that was pretty easy. Puller pulls against it. We got the flywheel off. I'm going to set that down over there. I got a table and I'm going to have everything laid out in the order. And I got the bags that I remembered to grab from work so I can bag up all the parts, keep everything organized. So now that we got the flywheel off, this is going to be your stator. We got three bolts here. Once these pop off, the stator will come out, and I'll be able to get the harness out, and then that'll be the rest of the electrical. So I'm going to grab a socket. These are going to be 516s, or I'm using an 8mm, because that's what was already on the ratchet. That chair is wobbly. Here. So with those three out, stator pops off, and that is the rest of my electrical harness. I'm going to grab these three bolts, and remember that they're kind of bronzy-ish. I'm going to bag those up. Okay, so once you have the stator off, we have this bottom... We have the timing advance, but basically there's three tabs on the bottom. They all have flat heads on top. Yeah, crack those off, pull those three out, and the rest of this will come out and expose the top of the crank. Drop your screws just like I do. Those are fucking tight. <laughs> oh wow, real easy with an impact. Those three out, this whole assembly pops up you can pull your wiring harness from out and behind the throttle lever make sure to remember that set this down over here all right so next up we're on the port side of the motor starter solenoid i'm going to get this wire that connects the starter to the solenoid off and then i'm going to take the strap off holding the solenoid in so i can take that off and get the rest of this electrical out all right so there's the wire from the starter putting the nut back on Next up, 3 8 bolts, two of them, holding the strap on. <laughs> I'm just going to pull one of them out. That should give me enough room to pull the solenoid out. There is a ground wire attached to it. Get that out, and the star lock washer. Strap back, solenoid out. And there's almost the rest of my electrical. I need to get the starter off to get the rest of this harness off. And I'm going to put this bolt back in, just to make sure I don't lose it. Next up, let's work on the starter really just want to get all these wires out so next up we're working on the starter we have two bolts on the port side one in the front holding it on oh yeah you can crack them with a quarter inch ratchet pull those out next one longer bolt second bolt same length and then one left in the front that last bolt out starter is free and you can see this harness was behind there so now our entire electrical system's out and the starter's out. Now, something to note, that front bolt is shorter than the other two. So keep that in mind when you're putting it back together. All right, next up we're gonna be doing the whole front. So we're gonna start with this timing marker, two 3 8 bolts on the top. And then from there, we're gonna work into the carb. I'm gonna take the carbs off as a stack. Yeah, I'm not gonna show cleaning the carbs in this, but if you wanna see, I'll put a link right here. I have a video cleaning the carbs on a 75 horse. They're identical. That one has the primer. If you want to learn how to clean your carbs, now would be a good time, especially if you're rebuilding the power head. You don't want it to not start because you have dirty carbs when you just rebuilt the motor, because it will make you very nervous. Two bolts on top, 716 head. 
timing indicator comes out. Next up, we're moving on to the carburetors. You're gonna need a half inch open wrench. The trick with these is you loosen them both up evenly because you don't have enough room to get the nut off the stud with the carb mounted. So I loosen one, I'm loosening the other. Now that I have both off, you kind of wiggle it and bring it back and then you'll be able to get the nuts out the rest of the way. There's two nuts. I disconnected the linkage and now your carb pops off. I am going to disconnect these fuel lines because they're most likely going to get replaced. So on the top, right by the intake side, you're going to have a small little line here. This one's going to be for primer and then the main, I think this is 5 16 line, that one's going to be your fuel feed. So with those two off, this is your top carburetor. So I'm going to set them off in the order that they come off, so top, middle, bottom. And I'm also, that is a brand new gasket, but I'm going to put the nuts back on the stud, just so it's one less thing I have in a bag for me to forget where it goes. Next up, middle carburetor. Same thing, crack the nuts off, pull the carb off. Alright, once you get the middle carb off, you're going to have to get your primer out of the way. You don't have to, but since we're taking this whole power head apart, we're going to take it off. Two 7 sixteenths nuts on the strap, just like on the starter solenoid, same thing. These are both going to have to come out all the way because there's a ground wire bottom of the primer. So take them out all the way and then you can put the bolts back in but have your primer laying out. There will be a purple wire coming off of the distribution block. That's going to be your power feed from the key switch. But since we already have the harness off, you won't see that. Those two bolts off, the strap comes off, and your primer comes out. We're going to lean it off to the side, and once we get the bottom carb off, it'll all come off. But I'm going to put these bolts back in. All right, there you go. So that's bottom carb, primer, and we're going to leave the linkage on this carb and the fuel manifold. All right, next up, we're going to be working on the starboard side. So all this linkage is going to have to come off, and it's easiest. There's two main bolts, one here, one here. Pull those two off, and all of this linkage is going to pop out. We can leave the adjustment screws where they are, so we don't have to mess with that but once we have that off it's going to be intake and reeds and then pretty much splitting the case and pulling pistons out all right so 15 16 works it's going to be what is that three quarter smaller than that but if you need to take a picture of this not too difficult but you just want to make sure that you put it back together the right way so once you pull that bolt out both parts will separate this arm is still connected i'm leaving it just for the adjustment so now we're going to take this last bolt out and that's going to be a Half inch, pop that last bolt out. I'm putting it back in the same spot, but there's all your linkage. These two will stay, they'll come off later. So make sure you lay it out how it came out. All right, so back on the front of the motor now, we're gonna take the intake manifold off. I'm gonna start with these, uh, this is the shift and throttle cable mount, two Phillips screws. Much easier with an impact. Those do bolt through the manifold, so they do have to come out. The rest of these bolts are going to be 3 8 I'm taking them off at the impact. What I personally like to do is go around the outside first and then the middle last because that would allow it to warp outwards. And it's not crazy important, but it's just something for peace of mind. Alright, I'm doing a separate baggie for these bolts to keep them together. Alright, so... I'm not reusing this gasket, so I lightly tapped it off. Now I can kind of pry. Just be careful, you don't want to get in the reeds. But pry evenly on both sides. Kind of work it off of there. Boom. So, there's your intake manifold. There's all your reeds. Kind of inspect them when you pull them apart, because we're kind of looking for what caused this. But those don't look bad at all. So I'm going to assume it was still running lean. All right, so on each side of the motor, you're going to have 3 8 bolts, and then you're also going to have these 9 16 That's what we're going to zip off. The motor mount's going to come off, and this bracket with the idle and max speed adjusters, those are also going to be coming off. So we're going to strip those off and then split the two cases. Alright, so once you get all of those bolts out, I didn't count them. We're on the head now. This is the bottom. So this is where the drive shaft from the lower unit would come through. We have this end cap bearing bolts, 7 16 and four of them. You're going to need to pull all four of those out and then we'll be ready to split the two halves apart. Right, so with those four bolts out, I'm using a screwdriver and my makeshift hammer, but tap it apart. Kind of be gentle on her. You don't want to bend it, but evenly on each side, pull it out. That's your end. So I'm going to sit this with the bolts that it came with. And now we're ready to split the two halves and see where the damage is. Make sure you have all the nuts off. All right, so I'll save you the details of splitting that apart, but you just kind of got to work it out real slow. Once that is split, 
you can split the two halves. So I'm gonna set this down before I look at it. So this is your crankshaft. Pistons are attached to the crank. This thing spins around. We have a melted piston. The reason I'm going this far is one, you need to in order to put new pistons and get it bored and all that. But two, I wanna check for crank damage because that is very expensive. But this honestly feels okay. It feels really smooth. Doesn't look too terrible. So next up is pistons. These are 12 point nuts. I have 12 point sockets, sweet. So we're gonna be starting from the flywheel side. You wanna keep these together. This is really important that you keep the end caps and rods together. These are broken apart when they're manufactured. They're cast as one piece, broken apart so it's a perfect fit. So these need to stay together. So we're gonna start off with the top one. All right, so we went looking for a 5 16 12 point socket. That doesn't exist around here, so. I shaved down the end of a 516 wrench because it needs to be a 12 point and I beat it with a vice grips because I don't have a hammer but that worked enough to get the one off all I'm gonna do is get the one off for today because the other cylinders look okay and all the crank bearings actually look okay the cranks got a little bit of damage around here I would assume that's from parts of the piston rod cap bolts out pistons gonna fall down just like that this is a caged needle bearing so this half is going to stay on this side and we're going to put the piston back together. So we're going to leave that like that. We're going to slide the block over, put our hand under to catch the piston. Just like that, out comes our piston. And you can see most of it's missing. But the good news is the wrist pin feels okay. So that's something you don't have to replace. You can see where it was hitting the wall from it wobbling back and forth because it, it, there's actually a hole through the piston. But there we have it. That is our problem. All right, everybody, so there you have it. That is how you disassemble the power head on a Johnson 70 horse. This will work for 65, 70, 75 horse. Any three cylinder, really, they're all pretty much the same. You can see top cylinder is horrible, and that's what your piston looks like. Top ring gone, and most of it just chewed to shit, but wrist pins were good, crank bearings were good. Everything else was good except for the bore and the piston. So, in theory, we're gonna get 30 thousandths oversized pistons. We're gonna get the cylinder board out 30 thousandths, and this baby's gonna be ready to go back together. Rods are still good. We're gonna reuse the bearings, get this probably decked, the head surface, and then put it all together. The next video that you guys are gonna see is gonna be reassembling this, and that's gonna be a longer, more in depth video because that's gonna have the torque specs and torque specs and torque pattern and stuff like that so that is going to be it for this video i'm going to take this block to get bored and i'm going to take these pistons with because i think i'm going to have to heat them up to get the wrist pins out without damaging them there are some things that i could have gone more in depth about tearing this apart but when you're tearing it apart you don't really need to know everything as long as you remember where you put stuff keep all your bolts together putting it together is where it's really important so hopefully this video helps someone Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. More outboard repair videos coming soon. Bush, fish, and merch down in the description below. And we'll see you guys on the next one.